This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back again to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Again, we're we're talking to uh, Cascade Policy Institute policy analyst Christina Martin in the whole issue of uh, this historical deal that we have here in the state of Oregon, talking about the education system. Okay, uh, we have uh, what, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to give Christina an opportunity to um, sort of close, if you will, and then we're going to open up the line. And uh, I, I, I want to just, just jump right up in here. You know, we're sitting in a recessionary situation. We've got a balanced budget aspect there. People are having some tough, tough times, if you will. And, you know, you, you see this education budget that's kind of, you know, when you look at the budget in totality, and people are saying, what are we getting for our money? And a lot of the kids, especially here in the, in the major, in, in the Portland metropolitan area, kids are failing schools. We're having major, major problems. Young people are all over the place where every time you pick up the newspaper it's a gang member this that uh, high the, dropout rate high dropout rate english as a second language as all all these different things and the, the, the bottom line is that what is it what is it doing if you will to develop if you will our young people the good citizens all the other good stuff we have some tough times and so it was costing us and you you made mention about some figures and when i was kind of interesting i didn't get all of it you said ten thousand in one case five thousand here whatever so what what is the truth here what let's, let's talk a little bit about that before we open up the line it's actually more than eleven thousand dollars per student now the when you ask how much we spend per student you will get tons of different answers so okay. if you look it up on chalkboard i think it currently says ninety three hundred dollars chalkboard project has kind of a breakdown of the and what, brief, what is Chalkboard? What, what are they chalkboard doing? Project, what? their goal is to make it kind of open up, um, well, the Open Books Project for Chalkboard. is Their goal is to open up things so that people can kind of see how much is spent. But they only include certain spending. So they, they don't actually include, for instance, um, well, <laughs> I, they use the U.S. Census Bureau's information, so I, I guess it's... I'm guessing at what they're including here, mm -hmm. but when you when you look at the ODE numbers, ODE which the, is? the Oregon Department of Education, okay. right? It looks like they're only actually including more the district level spending, so they're not including education service districts (ESDs), mm -hmm. uh, which is quite substantial. That's it's right. almost five hundred dollars per student in wow. some years. So in addition to right on top of what they that ninety three hundred, and then. There's other spending, so debt service. Debt service is simply payments on debts for things mm -hmm. like 
um, building a new building for schools, building or maintenance and retirement. Per, yeah, that, that there. can that can be in there. Okay. So it, it's just a matter of what it varies from district to district okay. on what okay. is going to be included in their debt service. But so they don't always include that either because it's not a direct spend but current it's money. expenditure. But it's it is money. money. Yeah. It is money. Um, so if you actually add that all up together, mm -hmm. it, we're spending more than eleven thousand dollars per student. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually learn more about that on Cascade Policy. Okay. Okay. CascadePolicy.org. I've got some nice charts and graphs that go back um, to the 1980s, really? and I've adjusted for inflation. I've used, um, you know, I show different figures. So one, I show the teachers' union figures, which is actually the most inclusive, mm -hmm. except for they don't include debt service, but. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I can give you a comparison of how okay. people count it. And then I also have information using just the Oregon Department of Education's numbers going back 30 years. And you can see that despite what people say, we have in fact increased spending. A lot of the times people say we're constantly cutting spending per student. Well, it all depends on what you're including and what you're looking at. And when you add it all together, we are in fact spending far more than we were back in the 1980s or the 90s. And what about the graph from the standpoint of whether or not kids are learning, you know, dropout rates. Do you have something that sort of reflects that um, in terms of how much money we're spending? Yeah, there's information on our website if you dig far enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make that more available, but yeah. um, you can actually quite easily see using national test scores. Okay. So um, the national, NAEP, and just look that up if you want to know it. Um, okay. We're pretty much flatlined as far as performance goes mm -hmm. by the time you get to high school. So things have actually gotten a little bit better for fourth graders. Uh, but when, by the time you get to be 17 years old, any kind of progress that the, the elementary schools have seen is lost. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately we're spending far more than we were 30 years ago and 40 years ago. If you go back further, nationally it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And nationally we, the spending has gone up like this mm -hmm. and performance is just flat. Wow. So, wow. Huh. So the question, everybody always says, we need more money. Yeah, okay, money is nice, but mm -hmm. what's it doing? Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. And then there's this other piece, I don't know what you all have done, the, the testing, the whole issue of testing, the effectiveness of testing. Is that something that uh, Cascade is maybe looking at? We don't really worry about that too much. I think that, um, you know, for instance, No Child Left Behind. I hear uh, a lot of complaints about No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. I don't like No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's more federal oversight. It's more top-down control mm -hmm. over how things are run on the local level. Mm -hmm. And we want thing, the whole system to be turned upside down so that parents have the most power. We want teachers to have more power in their classroom. We want principals to have more power in their school, but right now there's so much administrative mm -hmm. burden on top mm -hmm. of them that it makes things much more difficult at, at at the most important level. Okay, so now with the with the, with the, this change of the governor's control and then this super board, if you will, the superintendent, you think that might uh, that might be it, the it's, it's super board sounds more top heavy to me, okay. but okay. the reason why it doesn't bother me so much is because. At the bottom level, the very closest level to the child, the parent, mm -hmm. they now have more power. Okay. And charter schools, one of the reasons why I'm excited about charter schools is because they they do give teachers and principals more power at that local level. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to us. We think that they're the ones they're the ones who matter most to kids, not these people in Salem or in Washington D.C., mm -hmm. but parents. And then their, their classroom teacher, really, they, they matter far more. And so we want to see them freed to do their job. And they're getting less money for student. Well, yeah, where's the, well, the question is, is where is the money going? If we're spending more than $10,000 per student, mm -hmm. where is all that money going? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. There's a, uh, the teacher to student ratio in Oregon is reported to be 20 to yeah. 1. I don't, Teachers should be getting paid a little bit better if things are actually going to the classroom, but it's obvious that there's a lot going to a lot of other things mm -hmm. that in for most people, we don't value those other things so much as we value that classroom experience. Money's not going to the classroom. Okay, let's open up the line here, okay? Let's open up the line. You've you got the number on, the, on your screen. Uh, give us a call. And again, let's be clear, be short and, and right to the point. Ask the questions, and uh, we'll see if we can get Christina to respond to that we'll have a discussion on it okay so okay so give us a call again that's 503-288-4442 or 503-288-4448 give us a call and uh, 
do we, we're looking for feedback that's exactly what we're looking for so let's talk about your clothes now what are some of you were there any other points that you think we, we should uh, we should talk to that uh, that occurred during your analysis of this particular issue um, like the good points you, we talked about all of the, the part is there anything from a negative standpoint that you think something you think might need to be need to be adjusted if you will as time goes or something? right there's there's many things that need to be adjusted so things are still far too top heavy I think one controversial one controversial thing that I ha didn't really talk about in the op-ed um, is that actually the um, the online oh, yeah. school bill actually allows 5% of these online school teachers to be out of state. Mm. That's pretty exciting. Interesting. Yeah, and the reason why this matters so much is now you could have a teacher in from China actually teaching Chinese to students. So that's wow. pretty exciting. Interesting. Very interesting. But I, 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 you have a phone call, so maybe okay, I'll good. talk yeah, about licensure okay, in good. a minute. Call me on the air. Your question or comment, please. Hey, is this me? Yes, sir, you are. Hey, all right. I have a question for uh, Christina regarding the charter schools. Is there any movement towards making those charter schools a vocational orientated school, like one, say, that gears more towards agriculture or horticulture, mm, good, good or point. music, or good mechanical point. engineering, or environmental issues, or something like that, instead of just the, the cookie cutter uh, high school education you get to where they're more worried about the amount of credits you get as compared to anything else? Good point. That's good a point. great question. And Thank yeah. you very much, Connor. Good Thank point. You. Yeah, there's actually 108 charter schools in Oregon now. I'm sure there will, there will be more this fall. Um, and there are already some that are, in fact, music-oriented or vocationally mm -hmm. oriented. There's one here in Portland, uh, Le Leap Charter School. Okay. It's They actually have kids go and do internships and things. It's very hands-on in that sense, and so they want kids to have real-life experience. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different angles that these charter schools take, and mm -hmm. that's one of the exciting things about them. They don't have to do the cookie-cutter way. They can try different things. Mm -hmm. That's a good point he makes because, yeah, supposedly, i.e., the governor's direction, the state or in it, the green. Remember the green and energy yeah. aspect of it? I mean, you know, there's an opportunity there to put those, uh, put those pieces together, charter school. <laughs> charter school and energy, or if not that, the agri business. Yeah. After trying to figure out uh, how to educate um, most of our, our kids about the the agri business aspect of it, and maybe uh, offset some of the problems that we're having trying to get folks to be a part of agri business, making sure they can pick up those crops and things of that nature. Right, and I've heard actually this is a really interesting thing. So. There's something called a one school district. So that's a district that's small enough that they literally only have one public school. Mm -hmm. And uh, several of these districts, 11, last my last count, um, have actually converted their one public school into a charter school. Great. And they do that because it allows them to try a lot of different things. And one thing is 50% of their teachers um, can now be non-traditional mm -hmm. teachers. So mm -hmm. whereas currently, you know, they pretty much all have to be uh, teacher certified mm -hmm. by our state um, TSPC. Um, they can now actually be from from the communities. So mm -hmm. if you wanted somebody to come into your tiny little school and teach, um, f you know, farming, mm -hmm. agribusiness, whatever, yeah. or constitutional law, if there's a lawyer in town who knows something about that, mm -hmm. you could actually bring them in to teach a course, which is really an exciting opportunity. Um, but it, that's, so that's, that helps, that's and that's one of the many perks that these schools have when they become a charter school. Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, so let's let's talk about some of the, those other pieces you're talking. Is there anything else that do you think we might should, we should highlight a bit, a bit more? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's I'm kinda, tons of things I can yeah. think of. Um, yeah, you know, one thing I, I I could mention is there's been many studies done on vouchers. Vouchers, okay, vouchers. that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so charter schools, uh, we like charter schools, I like charter schools. Uh, but, but what, what's a voucher? What, uh, but, hey, what? But, but charter schools don't go far enough for choice because okay. they're, you know, what if, what if there's somebody who wants to send their child to say um, Jesuit High School or the Montessori School at the street? Okay. Uh, what, why should they, why should a parent have a big tax burden um, and you know they could send their school to they could send their child to a school and have the the state pay for that. Why why not allow them to keep a, some of their tax money in in mm -hmm. order to send, make the, another option to send their child to a private school? 
you know, what's the difference? Why does it matter whether they send their child to a traditional public school or to a private school? And for a lot of middle class families, they can't make that option. And